who am I? Asian dad, born in Vietnam. African mom, born in Comoros. I was born and raised in Paris, France. So when people ask me the question, where are you from? I was feeling conflicted, but I always used to answer, I am French. Dance has always been an important part of my life. I remember when I was a kid, waking up, going to the living room, finding my mom, and dancing with her. I remember taking ballet classes, attending every single annual dance show at my school. I remember dreaming of, of being on stage with Michael Jackson, Rihanna. Dance has always given me the confidence unleashing a different side of me that has no limits in self-expression. And at the same time, I was always the most serious kid at school, overachiever, always working for the best grades. I was indeed conditioned by my parents to become the typical lawyer, doctor, engineer. And I'm sure you guys can tell me about it. The pressure of being a woman of color, not having any model of success around you. Both of my parents are immigrants from their respective countries. They certainly wanted their kids to have the most prestigious path, being fully accepted and integrated in France. So that's what I did. I went to high school, the top one in France, got my master's degree, became a civil engineer in a top construction company. I was becoming part of that French elite, being the pride of my parents. I wanted to prove that as a woman of color, I could also become a model of success in the eyes of the society. Hmm. I kept dancing. But, you know, less, because the constraints of work and studying were heavy on me. I realized that I was building a strong career foundation, but deep inside, there was something that didn't feel quite right. It felt like an internal turmoil, the uncomfort was building day after day. I felt like I lost interest in climbing the corporate ladder and the golden quest for status. I had everything. I had degree, money, recognition, but I felt so empty and disconnected inside. Hmm. Something was missing, and I learned how to listen to my body. I had to find my truth. I had to reconnect with myself, right? So I was decided to know who I am and who I really want to become, no matter what. So here I am, looking at this quote that I wrote at my final year in my civil engineering school. Take every chance you get in life, because some things only happen once. I didn't know that I would soon prove myself wrong. 10, the number 10. It seems like a simple number to you, but that's the number that changed my life. 10 years back, I won my first international dance competition in the UK. It was a turning point for me. All my dance teachers, my dance mates, they were highly encouraging me to follow the dance path and become a professional dancer. But I didn't pursue dance career. I instead followed the academic path. I was still in high school, and I didn't take the chance. I was scared. But then, 10 years later, an unexpected event happened to me on a different side of the world. 
I participated in a TV dance competition. And turns out that Hong Kong awarded me the title of dance champion. I recaptured that quote, and I told myself, well, girl, you're proving yourself wrong. The chance happened twice. Was it a sign? The next day, I had already decided that I would quit my job, my stable position as a civil engineer, to become a full-time artist, dancer, choreographer, and content creator. What happened in my mind to leave everything that I had and to just start from scratch 10 years after? How did I come to this radical life change? Well, after leaving 22 years in France, Paris, I felt like I was pushing away my African side and my Asian side. Because of cliches, such as, oh, African people are troublemakers, or Asian people are boring or nerdy. I felt like I needed to explore, go to the outside world to liberate myself and elevate my mind. So I took some risks. I went to South Africa to study. I wanted to dig a little bit deeper in my African roots. Are you South African? You seem colored. You're one of us, they said. From learning the South African dance to exploring each tradition, I was navigating into the different ethnic groups and learning from the similarities that we had and from their perspective, their culture. I felt like a little fish in the water. I didn't become South African, but I was building pride in being African. And then I decided to go to Hong Kong to work. It unlocked a new side of me. You don't look Asian, they said. Well, actually, I felt even more Asian than before. From the food that I used to eat with my dad to the languages that I used to hear with my grandparents, I felt like Hong Kong was strangely familiar to me. I felt like I was belonging to the city, no matter what people say, think. The sense of community, the respect and the value of family, all of this was a side of me that I always pushed away when I was back in France. I met incredible, extraordinary people while I was traveling. People that were living on their own term through their talents, entrepreneurship, arts. So I spent time trying to understand, understanding their mindsets and learning from their successful journey. Those people, they were not forgetting what, they were not forgetting what, who they were, the heritage, the, the roots. They were just adding additional layers to, our, to their identity to explore new horizon, taking risks and taking action. But I found out there was one thing in common that they all have. They believe in themselves and they take action. So I felt like my mind was expanding and crushing down all mental walls that I had. And I was going to find who I was as an individual part of all these communities. I realized that I can redefine myself by, you know, acknowledging my background because my roots is not a limitation, it's actually a solid foundation and a rich foundation. The more I was learning about myself, the more I was building that trust, that confidence, the fact that I could believe in my capabilities, the power of my heritage. And I also realized that I was, I mean, the way I was thinking was, went beyond any Asian 
or European African mentality. I was slowly building a word culture kit mindsets. So traveling the words freed me. That day, I won the championship in Hong Kong, that final day. It was the fruits of all the journeys that I had traveling all across the world, regrouping Hong Kong dancers, African drummers, dancing to French music. I felt like all the dots were connected together. And that was the final art piece that I created that gave me the win. But it was not a win about dancing. It was a win about finding my true self. Here comes the day I decided to quit my job. What happened in my mind? People might think, oh, that was a 180 degree change. But actually, it was a slow process that took 10 years. I felt like I couldn't waste time anymore. Waking up and seeing all my childhood dreams disappear, I had to do something. And seeing all these people you know, creating new possibilities for themselves, not really thinking of all expectations from society and their family, I was truly inspired. So I started like financially saving a lot. I was, you know, going through a lot of trial error steps. I had to like create my own recipe and finally make a decision. So I was slowly building that invisible armor that made me stronger and stronger and more assertive. Once you are convinced that there's no other way you want to live your life, then you go for it. The energy that you put out in this world is the energy that you receive. Your physical presence, your open-mindedness to explore new environments will impact you the same way you impact it. And now, I am proud to be one of the ambassadors of diversity in Hong Kong in Asia by representing the African culture, community, dance, arts. <laughs> well, I think from the question, where are you from, we should twist a little bit and tell people to ask us, What's your heritage? What's your story? Where does it feel like home to you? France gave me the education foundation. South Africa shaped my art, my dance. Hong Kong gave me the mentality. Every single place added a special element in my redefined self. Well, I finally reconnected everything together. And that world exploration was, in fact, a reflection of my self-own exploration. So see, seeing all the similarities, cherishing the differences, celebrating all cultures together, the multicultural power and perspective, meeting other people will definitely help you to find to see that there's more than one solution. Cultural intelligence is intelligence. Well, I think we've been talking about like, a lot about how, I'm, I, how much I love dancing. So I think it's time to take you on board with me. So do you, can I teach you a dance move? Yeah. How are you guys feeling? No, for real. Can I teach you a dance move? Yeah. All right, all right, okay. Let's relax a little bit, you know? So, well, there's that one dance move that I really like from South Africa. Let me take you back there. So, it's coming from a genre called Ama Piano. So, what are you gonna do? Stand up. Everybody stand up, please. Yup. You're not gonna leave me by myself here. You're also with me. I want you to 
Put your two fingers just like this in front of you, right? As if you're pointing the sky. And then right now, what I want you to do is to put your chest up, I mean, open your chest out, and then bring it in. Out, in, out, perfect. I didn't know that you were all South African, okay. <laughs> all right. So now, now that you have the step, I want you to free your hands. So as you open the chest and close it, I want you to move the way you want. There's no rules, okay? And now, you're gonna follow my beats. You ready? We're gonna start slow, then I'm gonna accelerate a little bit to test you a little bit, right? You ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Boom. Cha, cha, boom. Ka, ka, ta. Ka, ka, ka. Faster. E, ka. Ta, ka, ta. Ta, ta, ka, 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 ka. Boom. E, ah. E, cha, ta. E, ti, ka, ka, ka. E, ka, ka, ta. Ta, 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 Boom, boom, ba, ta, 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 All right. You did good. You did good. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. So that move is called Tobeta from South Africa, remember. All right, I see you. OK. So this is what I'm talking about. This feeling of being connected with your passion. Dance connects me. Dance connects me to you. Dance fulfills me. Dance brings me happiness. Dance makes me feel alive. And this is what life is supposed to feel like. You having the feeling of being proud of your passion, right? You feeling connected to who you are and what you live for. Well, today, I challenge each of you to stop the fear, step out of your comfort zone. If you have a goal, a dream, a project, I want you to first accept where you're coming from, acknowledge your identity, your roots, your heritage, but also go beyond, expand yourself because the possibilities are limitless. But I also want you to celebrate the little achievements that you will create the, along the way as you're redefining yourself. Hmm? And if you get stuck, then jump into a new situation. Go meet different people with different mindsets. And maybe it will shift yours. I think what I really want to highlight through this story is that each choice that you make will have an impact on who you're becoming, your growth. And I also want to stress that it's never too late to follow your dream to pursue what you really want, to push yourself and take action to live through your purpose. It does take time to build a relationship with your passion and cultivate that mental readiness. 27 years old sounds a little bit old to you know, start a dance career, but I didn't listen to it. There's no time limits. There's never the right time. Your success is not about winning, it's about finding that feeling of doing the right thing for yourself. Well, now, let me ask you, what's next? Thank you, I'm Anisha Tai.